Hello everyone and welcome to the Spring Boot part 2 video on IntelliPart. So in the previous video, we started the Spring application. So we had a Java class and a main method. And inside the main method, we had this another method called Spring application dot run. In this video, we are going to learn about creating a REST controller. Now before we head on to discussing more about REST controller, do not forget to hit the subscribe button and click the bell icon. So in the previous video, we started with the spring application and inside the main method, we had this method called spring application dot run spring application dot class comma args. Args is basically the argument. So I had already told you that we had static spring application class and from that class, we access the run method accepting the two arguments. The first one is a class which you can see all over here. And the second one is args, which is the argument. So let me show you that if you click all over here, it shows that the class that can be used to bootstrap and launch a spring application from the Java main method. By default, the class will perform the following steps to bootstrap your application. First one, it is going to create the appropriate application context instance depending on your class path. Second, it's going to register command line property source to expose command line arguments as spring properties. The third one is, is going to refresh the application context loading all singleton beans. And the fourth one is, it's going to trigger any command line runner beans. And most of the circumstances, the static run class string method can be called directly from your main method to bootstrap your application. Now I'm going to explain you basically what spring does you know basically when we run our application spring does a lot of things for us so let me chunk it down in bits and pieces so that you're gonna understand it in a much more easier way so the first thing it does is that it starts the default configuration which addresses the 70 percent of the use case and the second one is that it starts the spring application context which you can understand in a way such that Spring provides a container for your code that runs on the server. So you have a business service and you have a controller and you have your data services. So basically you can imagine Spring acts as a container for those services. And technically speaking, this container is called application context. So every Spring application has this application context, which runs the application context when the spring app is started. After this, it performs the class path scan, which means that if you have to plug in your code by creating a custom class and annotating them. So for example, you create a service class and you annotate it with the service. You create the controller class and you annotate it with the controller. So in this way, you can understand that each class contains the marker and it tells the spring to treat it differently. Like if it's a service annotation, so it will tell it that treat it like the annotation. And if it's like the controller annotation, then it will tell the spring to treat it like a controller. So if a spring has to scan the class path and identify a different classes that you have annotated, that's what the class path scan does for us. So basically when your spring application is starting, spring can look up the different annotations that you have included in your project and identify the class path associated with it. And also these classes have the metadata with the spring, how they have to be treated, like it has to be treated like a service or it has to be treated like a controller. So the spring looks up to it by following the class path scan. So the spring can infer all of this from the class path and understand these classes have to be treated by performing the class path scan. And after scanning the class path, it starts the Tomcat server. So you would have seen that when we have to run our application, it started the Tomcat server. We didn't have to additionally download it, but it came along with the Spring application. That's why Spring apps are standalone applications, which means that you don't have to download the servlet container. All you have to do is to start your application and Spring Boot is going to provide you the servlet container. So, let me run this application and show you what are the next steps. So as you can see, our application has started running. 
and and let me show you the terminal so this is basically our con console so as you can see all over here the ascii has come again and it shows that the tomcat started a port on localhost 8080 okay now let me type this port number and show what is coming next so as you can see all over here i have typed the address same which our server has given so as you can see it says that 8080 okay let me show you you can see the port number as 8080 now i have done the same thing all over here okay now let me run it so you can see the error comes up white level error page this application has no explicit mapping for error so you are seeing this as a fallback now let me explain you why this 404 error is coming up so that error was coming because our application didn't have the required mapping now the solution is to that problem is that we can add the controller and try to resolve the issue so now what we want is that given any request let the controller handle the request so the controller in the java is a class that has certain annotation marked in it and this annotation lets the spring know what url you are trying to map to and what will happen when the request comes to the url so in order to map the url the spring needs these two information so in our today's hands-on session we are gonna create a controller class and mark it with the annotations so that the spring gets to know about it what url access it needs to to get to know about it and secondly we are going to write a method that needs to be triggered that when that url is called we are going to do annotation and the method so that it maps the required url now suppose i have a url about localhost 8080 slash hello and when we put this it shows a white label error of 404 status so let me show you an example of an application where i'm going to try to resolve that issue by creating the controller class so my proposition is let's build a web application which is gonna say hi user when we put hello what something it involves is creating a controller so the web layer in the spring framework has something called spring mvc so basically you can understand this as spring mvc is considered as a child project of the spring framework so the spring mvc helps you write the server side code which maps to the url and provides it responses so the response can be a rest response which basically it can be json or it can be an html response which can be a jsp or an ftl response so in our example we will be building the simple rest api so in that case we will be having the rest response so when i put localhost 8080 it will return a simple string hello user so what i will do first is create a java class so now let's create a class all over here just right click okay go to new and select the class okay now you can name such as i want to name it as course or we can name it as hello okay and our class name is hello okay and i want to put it in a package of say hi okay or let's change it something like hello and name of our class is hi so we are putting it in a different package okay and now we can select the public static void main and just click finish on it so you will see we have a new package created all over here okay let me show you so which is spring application basics dot hello and inside this i have hi dot java so the purpose of this class is to act like a controller and what the use case of controller is to map the required url in which our case is localhost 8080 so after creating this class okay you can see an empty java class all over here and this is supposed to be our spring controller which is public class hi so you can give a meaning to these spring entity by annotating them so that the spring controller gets to know that this is the required controller so in our example we want this to be as a rest controller so there is an annotation in the spring framework called as the rest controller so 
you will have to put this as a rest controller to make any class as controller and you can get this annotation from the spring MBC. So as you can see all over here, I have added the annotation rest controller at the rate. Now just put your mouse on it and you're going to see it says that import rest controller org.springframework.web. So it belongs to the web layer of the MVC framework. Just click on this. Okay. So it's going to import our required package. Now after adding this annotation to any class, it becomes the rest controller. So what does it mean that this class is a rest controller? It means that you can put methods here and which is going to map to the given request. So in that case, we are going to execute the user making a request to the given URL. So let's add a method here called public string hello. So that method is going to return hello user. So let me type all over here. It says that public string hi user. This is going to be our method all over here. So as you can see all over here, it is returning the string called hi user and we have this method called string hi user. Okay. So basically this method needs to be executed when the user requests the URL localhost 8080 slash hi user. So you're going to have a request map when this method is called and you can achieve this by adding another annotation that is request mapping. And this annotation is from another Spring MVC called whip. Now let me show you all over here. So I'm going to type all over here request mapping. Okay. And it's going to take a parameter called the URL. Suppose I say slash hi. Okay. Now let me see what the error is coming. So it's saying import request mapping from org.springframework.web which basically belongs from the web layer of the spring framework, which is basically the MVC. So I'm just going to click on it. Okay. So it has imported the rest controller for us. Now there is slight error. So what you can do all over here, you can put these commas. Okay. So the error has gone. Now what I want to say this is that this slash, you know, whenever we are going to type localhost 8080 slash high, so this method is going to be called up and it's going to return the high user. So this annotation is available for all the requests like put, post, delete. Then for these other things, basically request mapping takes the default get request, but other requests are also available like put, post, delete. The only thing you have to do is you have to explicitly mention those things. But in our case, it's just a get request. So it's all fine. So this is class in which there are two annotations. The first one is a rest controller as you can see all over here. And the second one is a request mapping. So basically our first annotation tells the spring that it is a rest controller which is going to take the HTTP request and it returns the HTTP response which is basically the rest response. And then you have the request mapping annotation which takes slash hi as a request and returns hello user or hi user whenever it is triggered. So this is what we have done here. So you would be thinking how to connect to a spring framework that it doesn't have to show the white label error. So there is no big rocket science behind this as I have told earlier that spring analyzes it by the annotation and does the required class path scan. So basically spring looks at these classes and tries to find these annotations and registers it. So in this, it looks up to this class and finds that it has two annotation. The first one is a rest controller and the second one is a request mapping. So whenever it is requested, the request controller knows it that this class is a controller and later on finds that it has a request mapping annotation, which means that it remembers that this has method and it's going to return the required string after the application has started up. So you don't have to do anything else. You would find it very easy. So let's run our application by clicking this green symbol all over here and hope so 
that we're gonna get the HTTP response as high user. So as you can see all over here that after clicking this green button, my application has started. It says that Tomcat started on port 8080. Now after clicking on the web, okay, that is localhost 8080 slash high, that was our request mapping, it's returning the high user. So which shows that we have successfully done the first step by building our REST controller. So this was all for today's session. In the Spring Boot part 2, we have learned to create the REST controller. So in the next part, we are gonna return the JSON object. And thank you for watching this video. Just a quick info guys. IntelliPad provides Java certification online training mentored by industry experts. The course link of which is given in the description below.